Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We want you to know that we would love to hear from you. Right. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today our guest is Dr. Nicholas Kangawasa and Laura Ducote. And Dr. Kangawasa is the Chief Medical Officer at RHM Medicine and Gynecology. And Laura is a beautiful family nurse practitioner there and the primary medical provider at RHM's Alabama office. And they're both young informed and we were sharing uh, in the show yesterday it really is like a new evangelization in yeah. telling the culture the truth about women's health care um, because in the past when women had issues they would isolate them put them on birth control mm -hmm. and it became her issue her problem where what they do is restorative and it becomes, in marriage, it becomes the couple's problem. It becomes the couple's way. And it brings about communication and community and, and the beautiful journey together and the way God intended it to be. So we're excited to have them on today. And they're going to tell all about the services that they do provide. Um, and they also deal with fertility issues also. Yeah, restorative reproductive health clinics, startup planning and funding for communities, affordable and accessible ovulation charting, fellowship program in women's reproductive health, outreach initiatives in reproductive health, education for schools. And it really is, as we said, Joy, a new evangelization. Um, I wish we didn't need one. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. about, it's just about the human body, femininity, but uh, it is what it is. And they're doing a great job. And I really think they want to multiply and kind of duplicate mm -hmm. what they're doing. They serve Alabama, uh, Georgia, Florida. Several, several other states. Mm -hmm. So be filled with hope. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, our guests again today are Dr. Nicholas Kangawasa and Laura Ducote. Now, Dr. Kangawasa is the Chief Medical Officer at RHM Medicine and Gynecology. And Laura is the Family Nurse Practitioner there and the Primary Medical Provider at the RHM's Alabama office. Go to their website, rhmgyn.com. If you're a wife, if you're a mother, if you have children, um, this is something, maybe you're out on your own, you're a young adult, and you're trying to figure this out. They have a lot of answers for you. They are greatly studied, approved, and they're ready to help you. They're not cutting corners or doing the wrong thing. No. Because some people are doing that with this suppressive kind of medicine that's going on. And there's a hunger and a thirst among Christian people, Catholic people, uh, people who are just common sense people and understand the human body and how it functions and want people who are professional that are going to give them treatment according to how my body's supposed to be functioning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Laura, tell our family exactly what RHM provides. So we are standard gynecology care. So, you know, annual exams, you know, this type of thing. We do all, everything that a regular GYN office would be able to do, but then we also really look deeper, as you were saying, at what, what's the root cause of some of the things that our patients come in with. So the things we see most often probably are heavy periods, painful periods, um, PMS, uh, acne, infertility is really a big one, recurrent miscarriage. Um, so those are some of the big ones. You know, I mentioned infertility. Um, you know, it seems like everyone I know knows someone that's struggling there. And you know, the difference that we really provide in that area is that we don't want to bypass the function of the 
the reproductive organs or, you know, the dignity of the marriage, the dignity of the woman, um, because we want to restore the original function. You know, infertility is not a diagnosis, mm -hmm. it's a symptom. And so we want to get to the root of all of these symptoms that our patients are coming in with. Right. And you know, try to try to restore from from the ground up there. Mm -hmm. the, is surgery is obviously a part of this. From time to time, you've got to go that route. Uh, we just had a friend who we didn't know who was with you, and so she had some surgery with you, and then she said, "Well." You know, he knows you all, and so it's really, really great. But thank you for serving her. Why? But you provide surgery. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. What, what, what types of surgery are you doing in this reproductive area? So guess what? It's restorative reproductive surgery, mm -hmm. right? So I think one thing that um, a lot of the surgery is really focused on restoring the reproductive organs, right? If let's say there's a blocked tube, we can unblock the tube um, rather than just removing it, and then the patient's now only left with IVF. Um, so those type of surgeries, you know, we, we do uterine surgery as well. We do a lot of endometriosis. Endometriosis is when you have cells that is similar to the lining of the uterus, but it's outside of the uterus. It causes a lot of inflammation, a lot of scarring. Yeah, it has been linked to infertility as well as recurrent miscarriages, as well as miscarriages. Um, so those type of surgeries. And I think one thing, one thing about um, about 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 infertility and, and, and about kind of like the way we we really look at infertility is, is one thing that I've learned from my patients over the years, especially for those from those patients who are struggling with infertility is that is that yes, you know, they do want to have children, but I think one thing that is that is really striking is also it's like and it's very common sense when you kind of think about it is they want to know why they are infertile, mm. right? Yeah. Mm. And with the current like artificial reproductive techniques like IVF, they kind of bypass all that. It doesn't give the woman mm -hmm. or the couple the why they're able to conceive. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that is more um, this 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 is, is more is more sometimes I think it's more important. Mm -hmm. What is it with with my body that I'm not able mm -hmm. to get pregnant, or, mm -hmm. or if what is it with my body that I keep having miscarriages? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think there's one, like Laura was mentioning, is very different approach to kind of like the mainstream fertility treatments. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's what we were saying again, it's connectedness versus isolation. Yeah, I'm just not getting the information. I, mean, I need to know how, why is this happening as best we can understand that. My own interconnectedness, is there something that I can do to help? Especially with infertility. People always like, they feel guilty about infertility. And it's like, well, you know, this is just, it's, it's just something that's happened. It's not you intentionally doing this. Mm -hmm. well, well, why? What, what is it with me? Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. could tell me something, fine, instead of, we're not going to tell you anything, here's your next step. That's uh, right, that's in right. In vitro yes. fertilization, right? Mm -hmm. That's right, and everything is like, with, with current um, infertility treatment, all the focus is in that one cycle. All mm -hmm. the investment is in yes. one cycle. Yes. You mentioned about cutting corners, you know, that's basically yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned, you kind of keep bringing the, 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 the theme about isolation. Yeah. Um, and, and with this suppression, it comes isolation. With kind of like ignoring and bypassing, it comes isolation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, with restorative, it comes, guess what, accompaniment, right? I think okay. like, you know, the Holy Father keep mentioning about apostolate is about attraction and counter accompaniment. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we get the women, um, uh, get them linked with a, a cycle educator, with a health coach teaching them, guiding them, accompanying them as they learn about this new habit, about how to identify ovulation. So, so, so now you, you have a healthcare that is accompanying the patient mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. the journey. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yes. You don't usually associate that with healthcare. Mm -hmm. You usually get, he's five minutes with me, 10 minutes with me. Here's I'm not sure he's really even hearing me. <laughs> and true. you're saying mm -mm. You're, you're laboring with them, so right. to speak. Yeah. You know, you're really in there with them, you're accompanying them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, that's one thing that we see from our patients, too, is that we're restoring, our goal is to restore health, you mm -hmm. know, and that fertility should be kind of an additional you know, component of that, if that's what's something that they desire, but that their health is restored in the process. Mm -hmm. But with IVF or IUI or things like this, you know, nothing is being addressed for their health. They still feel just as bad if they mm -hmm. had symptoms, you know, or things like this. 
And so we're restoring, we're giving them life mm. in their own life, mm -hmm. you know, by restoring their own health, mm -hmm. even if conception still isn't happening or right. is taking a while or right. things like that. And now tell our family also about the mission aspect and then tell us about the logo. Those are two things we want to know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, like, like our name is Reproductive Health Medicine and Gynecology. I think we, we purposely um, kind of select the name, actually our Lord select the name, <laughs> is, is because reproductive health has been associated with, um, with just the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Whenever you Google reproductive health, the first thing that come up is going to be contraception, abortion, sterilization, mm -hmm. STDs. Um, now they say reproductive sciences. Now we want to reclaim that, you know, kind of reproductive health is just an aspect of health for the woman, just like cardiovascular health, um, GI health, you know, reproductive health is part of that component. Mm -hmm. yep. So we want to kind of reclaim that. Um, so that's, that's kind of like the, the, the first layer of, of, of our name. And looking at our logo, you know, it's actually a, a menstrual cycle. It's actually a woman's cycle. Mm -hmm. We have the, uh, the red the R, which is kind of your, your menstruation, menstruation day. And then you have the gray, which is kind of your dry days. Mm -hmm. And then you have the blue, which is kind of your, your fertile days or your ovulation day. And then again, you go to, to gray, which is dry again after mm -hmm. you ovulate. And then the cycle begins again mm -hmm. with, with the menstrual cycle. So we do have that um, within, within, within our, our, our logo as well. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing also um, is that the, the, the why we have the, the three letters that RHM, I think it, it is, it is a representative to something that I believe is deeper. Um, like the, the um, in Hebrew, um, the the word for mercy is is araham, mm -hmm. and and mercy come from a noun, a root word, which is the womb. Mm. Yes. So I think the, the 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 Jewish people, at least the ancient Jewish people, believe that mercy to be originating from a mother's womb. Mm. Um, so I think there's something that that um, is very profound. You know, like. Raham is the, is the word that our Lord uses on a daily basis when he preached about mercy, about pity, mm -hmm. about compassion. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I think is very important. Oh, it's mm -hmm. very, it's, that is so powerful. Um, yeah, so the root word, Hebrew word, uh, is womb, and then from that comes the verb action, uh, mercy, and Jesus speaks about that. So he he has this, when he speaks about mercy, he uses an organ. <laughs> he says, he's trying to say, this is how I feel about you. The most intimate, interrelated relationship is between a mother and that baby in her womb. This baby's totally dependent upon this mother, and this mother's giving her body and her blood. You know, it's, right? He's giving, giving to this child, and he, say, and he tries to say, this is what I'm doing for you. This is my relationship with you. In this intimate relationship, I want to give you my resources, my salvation, my body, my blood, that you might have life. And look at that! Look at what we're doing. I mean, the womb has become mm. the most dangerous place mm -hmm. in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And what, what, a, what a defilement! What a blasphemy against the Lord! But the Lord says, "No, the womb is it. You know, this is this mm -hmm. is this is the word picture for you when you think about my love for you. I mean, how awesome is that? And you're trying to restore that. What a privilege for a woman! Mm. The guy can't have that privilege. You know, it, it's like, and that's the feminine genius again. I never knew what the feminine genius was. So why do they mm -hmm. call them feminine genius? Like, what's that? About? Because women have a head start on the human person and understanding the human person, even if they never get pregnant. Because right. they have a womb. There's something about that. They need to ask, what What is this womb? What does this mean? What are you telling me? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad for the logo, and you're yeah. explaining yeah. it to us. It's so powerful. Yeah, and just also kind of like in addition to that, you know, um, the image of the divine mercy is within our logo as well. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like the white center that is 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 the Eucharist, mm -hmm. and we have the blood and the water that that coming out of that of the Eucharist. And I think one thing that I think you mentioned about about uh, the womb, about the woman. I think one thing is is also in my mind very profound is that. The only organ in the human body that pours out blood and water is the womb. Mm -hmm. 
mm. right? So our Lord likes to give us images for us to kind of relate, mm. for us to be tangible, to sensible. What is an image of the divine mercy, mm. you know? And, and, and that image is, is a woman's womb. Mm -hmm. That is so very natural. And one of the things that you're doing on a restorative level with a woman's womb in this culture of death that when a woman participates and say she wants to do the abortion pill, that one of the services that you all provide is that you're doing the abortion pill reversal. Now, last week we had on Dr. Delgado, Delgado yeah. who was one of the founders of the abortion pill reversal, but that's part of one of the ministries, one of the missions that you're saying as to this culture of death, we want to even help you restore this process. Yeah, so that's what, that's what um, we do. We do um, abortion pill reversal. I think to date we've done about 154 um, mm -hmm. um, APR starts. Um, I would say that since 2020. Um, so yeah, so we do a lot of our protocols is derived from Dr. Delgado's protocol. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people ask about, you know, hey, what is the success rate of the APR? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the beginning, we kind of talk about, yeah, you know, the success rate is part of the studies is 50 to 70 yeah. percent. Our observation is 30 to 50 percent. But one thing, though, is always 100 percent for the women. Mm -hmm. Always 100 percent, mm -hmm. without no doubt, right? right. Because you, 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 you have, you're creating that channel, you're creating mm -hmm. that opportunity for, for the women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and for your office to be a part of arresting the process of an abortion to say, Let's try to restore life to this baby, yeah. you know, with the, with the progesterone, and we're going to help you be a part of that from this beautiful medical community, as mm -hmm. opposed to the abortion industry. All they want to do is give pills to abort and end life, and to destroy the baby and to destroy the woman. And here, yet again, you come back with a restorative in ways that you could say, "How can we help you mm -hmm. emotionally?" physically, spiritually, because you all work with pregnancy resource centers mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a beautiful hand-in-hand -hand ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like, what we provide for the APR is a very tiny portion of the entire APR process, right? We can only provide <coughs> the medical aspect. But you know, this is where we, we need, we cannot, ex our APR um, program cannot exist without um, a crisis pregnancy center, mm -hmm. a pregnancy resource center, because mm -hmm. they are the one that is providing the resources. They are the one that providing the advocacy. They are the one that's, that's kind of like, like really accompanying these women. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas our part is more, here's the medication mm -hmm. that you can mm -hmm. take, and this is what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's with great wisdom, great truth, and with medical knowledge, and then we couple that together. Just to, another, again, a heart cry to say, we can restore your soul in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your your approach is just so, you know, Christianly humanistic. Mm -hmm. And you're saying it's not enough to provide the technical, medical, scientific. You got to do all that. But like, th this is a human being. Mm -hmm. And you need to accompany a human being. And it's so wonderful mm -hmm. to hear medical professionals speaking that way because it speaks about time and that you're worth the time. You're a human person. Mm -hmm. We want to, we want to, they manifest the mercy of the Lord, that womb love, that mercy is coming towards you. We want to connect. We want to take hold of what's going on in your life, the joys and sorrows of life, and, and take hold of that with you. We actually really want to do that because mm -hmm. you have a vocational call to this. You have a spiritual call to this. You're going to be held accountable for the way you offer your medicine, how you do it. That's your approach. How many, um, okay, so Georgia, Alabama, now you're reaching other states, how is that? They can get care from you somehow, some way? What yeah. states? So, so as, a, as, a, as a practice, we are licensed in Illinois, okay. in, in Georgia, Alabama, um, California, Florida, and Virginia. And so, so yeah. how can people get in touch with you? So, so um, they can go to our website. There is a, a, um, um, a contact us form that they can fill in. They can call our office. Um, and our office number is 770-450-8677. One thing that we, we are able to do, and I think this is kind of help with COVID, is that we're able to utilize telemedicine, right? So 80% of our patients are being seen via telemedicine. All our cycle charting instruction, health coaching, those are all done telemedicine. 
So we are making this care accessible. Mm. Yeah. And the second thing also is that we accept insurance, which means that you know we, we are making this type of care also affordable. Mm -hmm. And one thing that, that, that with charting and with health coaching, one other important aspect of our care is accountable, mm -hmm. right? I think with charting, one thing more than anything is that, that our patients learn to be accountable for themselves. Because mm -hmm. they know now, they mm -hmm. possess themselves, and now they can really exercise their will. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at accessible, affordable, and accountable care, what you're seeing is, guess what, is freedom mm -hmm. and responsibility. Mm -hmm. We should the whole team on the new evangelization, uh, on the new evangelization mm -hmm. uh, for you know St. Yeah. John Paul II, yeah. but freedom and responsibility. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. Yes. Well, this is absolutely profound. It's wonderful. It's hopeful. Thank you so much for your great work. And may you not be content mm. that it stays with you. May it be a model for many places that will spring up all over the country and maybe different parts of the world. So thank you. God bless you and thank keep you. you and protect you. You're wonderful healers. Thank you. RHMGYN.com. RHMGYN.com. If you were from some of those states uh, that uh, Dr. Nicholas was mentioning, you can get care through him. If you're saying, hey, I'd like to see this modeled in, in our community, maybe you are an, an OBGYN or a GYN, you say, I want some of these components, get in touch with them. RHM.org, RHM.org, or RHMGYN.com. Com. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, Father John Paul, what did you think about what they had to share today? Uh, I hope they come back mm -hmm. I hope because there's so much more that they can explain um, outside of just a 20, 20 minute, 30 minute show. Mm -hmm. They could have a, a whole hour show or a whole yeah. series mm -hmm. yeah. for that matter. Um, I like the term restorative health care, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, looking at the whole person because there's always something more to somebody's health. Uh, even health crises, there's always something more. When a doctor goes into a room, um, you know, a doctor's going to be asking probably many different questions, and it's all reliant on the patient really opening up and saying, this is what's wrong, this is where it hurts, um, this is how long I've been experiencing this type of pain. And the same, I was thinking to myself, when I'm in the confessional, too, mm. on the spiritual side, it's very often the same thing that happens. Mm -hmm. There's always something more to what somebody is saying, mm -hmm. not just what the symptoms of what somebody is saying, their sins, but let's go a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And all, all we need to do, a doctor needs to do, and me as a priest uh, need to do, is sometimes we need to ask a little bit more mm -hmm. questions, kind of fill in the blanks. Yeah. And it helps them to it helps us to diagnose maybe the problem that the person's experiencing, mm -hmm. not just from the physical side, but also the spiritual side too as well. Yeah, yeah. We well need, said. We need priests and medical professional, professionals that will take an extra five minutes. Mm -hmm. and that, that's what it <laughs> that, does take, and that's what, doc, that's what the doctor said, really accompanying somebody, mm -hmm. not just um, listening to sins, but also in the confessional, but actually walking with somebody. Let's go a little bit deeper into mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And often, yeah. people will open up. Mm -hmm. People really will. They, they want to be better. Close this in a prayer with a blessing, sure. Father, especially around this show and, and these issues. The family at home, we, we pray, especially for anybody who is experiencing any problems um, with infertility. We pray especially for you. God is with you, and God loves you very much. And may the blessing of all, mighty God, be upon you and your family the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And go in peace. Thank Hope you. you were encouraged by this show today that God is raising up amazing people in every sphere. And this whole medical scientific sphere has been sidejacked by the enemy in so many ways. And God is raising up ministries mm -hmm. like RHM, rhm.org, where 
healthcare professionals want to accompany you and bring the best of science, medicine, and our great Catholic faith. Be encouraged. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.